Hi everyone, what's up? It's Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we carry on from the last installment of Latte Art for Beginners, where we established everything you need to begin practicing Latte Art. And today we're just gonna continue on with that journey and discuss the topics that will set you on your way to steaming quality milk within your own homes. Now, within this series, we're not taking anything for granted. And the aim here is to cover most of everything you need to know about steaming and pouring latte art. So if you're here to learn how to pour a fancy pattern, then stay tuned as this series heats up. Hit that subscribe button and that bell icon on your screen. And then that way you keep up to date when we release the next video within this series. Now let's jump straight into beginner's latte art for the home barista part two. So we begin today by discussing ideally which is the better product to prepare first. Is it the espresso or do I steam my milk first? This might seem obvious to some, though others might be using manual brewing gear or even an espresso machine such as a single boiler that doesn't allow for simultaneous production of espressos and steam. But where possible, I will always recommend making the espressos first as once you've gone and steamed your milk, there is more of a rapid decline on the texture of the steamed milk that if left for too long sitting, it won't ever pour latte art. So a good rule here is brew your espressos first and then focus on the milk. Additionally, whilst espresso can also lose its quality, I come back to something I mentioned in the previous latte art video, and that is so long as the espresso has a level of concentration that gives it its rich and dark color, then it's going to create contrast in the cup against the milk and latte art will appear. The milk on the other hand, this is the Achilles heel of the whole process. Don't steam your milk just right or leave it sitting for too long after steaming it and the milk will be impossibly difficult to pour latte art with. And on occasions when I've been practicing latte art, I even just rack up six to eight espressos sitting in the cups first. So then I can at least have back to back sessions of steaming and pouring rather than intermittently between espresso brewing. So with that, let's now prepare our jug for steaming. Now we want to be using cold milk straight out of the fridge. This is your best friend as it's going to take longer to heat up, thus giving you more time to achieve the correct volume of steamed milk we're aiming for. Warm milk being the fact that it's closer to your ideal temperature, it's going to heat up quicker. So it'll give you less time to perfect that consistency. Now in filling the jug up with milk, make sure we have the right size jug for the cup we'll be using. Then you wanna go and visually divide that jug up into thirds. That first third will fill with cold milk or somewhere just above this third line is okay, depending on our end results. The second third is where we want to aim to have our milk stretched into. So when we've done steaming, the volume to the original amount of milk will be increased by the way of foaming it. And if we land within this area and practically anywhere in between, this is gonna be a great start to begin with. Now to quickly touch on texture of our milk, the amount of foam you've created or the volume you've increased your milk by will also depend on how smooth that milk is or how textured it is. And another way of saying this is how small are those bubbles in your milk and then how well incorporated they are into the rest of the body of the milk. This relates closely to the wand placement during steaming and we'll touch on this very soon. But taking a look back at that third third or the top of the jug, we're gonna keep this empty throughout the process. So if you have milk that's been steamed up to here, then something has gone wrong and we're gonna to need to retrace our steps to see if we've used the right size jug for our cup added the right amount of milk into the jug to begin with, or perhaps incorrectly placed our steam wand and created too much volume in our milk. And if the opposite also happens and you've discovered you've poured your latte out but you didn't fill your cup up at the end, then you would also consider these three factors again to uncover a consistent volume you need from milk steaming. And it can be a little bit confusing when there's phrases being thrown around like milk texturing, adding volume, creating tight micro bubbles, pulling the air in, getting the vortex going and incorporating the volume and the list goes on and on and on. But to simplify our aim, when we are steaming milk, we have two things we are trying to achieve. That first is that we wanna heat our milk up to our choice of preferred drinking temperatures. And secondly, we're trying to add additional volume to our milk in the jug. Now, adding volume to our milk happens by way of using that steam wand to spin the milk around in the jug in that vortex-like fashion. Imagine kind of like whipping eggs in a bowl. And this creates bubbles that foam up and add that extra volume to your milk. But the reason for the spinning as a crucial element of milk texturing 
is that it reintroduces already made bubbles into the complete body of the milk, whilst simultaneously breaking down big bubbles in the process smaller and smaller, so you end up with unidentifiable milk foam as those bubbles are so small. Compared to if I was to just hold my steam wand in a position where I didn't get the spin on it, then I would perhaps create more and more bubbles, though it would be a thicker style foam that wouldn't be so smooth. So having smaller bubbles that are consistently spread throughout the body of the milk not only expands its volume more evenly, but when we are drinking it, it allures to the texture of the milk that we refer to as silky smooth, aka micro bubbles. And another great feature, feature, is that the right word? For smaller bubbles in your milk, is that smaller bubbles stay together longer and don't pop quite as quickly as larger bubbles do. So your latte art is going to be there longer to appreciate. Now, as for the temperature of your steamed milk, that's a little bit easier to explain. And it's generally to your preferred temperature that you enjoy it at. Now, for the most part, that's 55 to 65 degrees Celsius range. That's what most cafes produce. I would say 65 is pretty hot straight away, but for hotter coffees, if you prefer it, 70 degrees is possible. However, you do end up burning your milk above that range. So I would avoid this also because burns do become more serious at these higher temperatures. Let's just say if the milk is accidentally dropped. Now at under 55 degrees Celsius, the drink could almost be considered lukewarm. Not to forget the fact that when we're talking about steaming our milk, milk takes time to reach these temperatures. So if you're steaming at a lower temperature, you've set yourself a challenge where you need to create bubbles and volume in your milk faster. So that way you have time to incorporate them and break those bubbles down to create that silky smooth milk. Now when using any sort of milk thermometer to check the milk temperature is a great learning tool. And on a regular basis, I use one to double check the temperatures after steaming my milk. And don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting you don't use a thermometer during steaming, but it does kind of create one more thing to focus on when really we could just be using our senses of touch. And our hands are very sensitive to temperature changes. So I use my palm and my fingertips to guide me through steaming to get the right temperature. This approach allows me to focus more on the steam wand placement and then I don't also have to consider the temperature gauge as well. So with your hand under the jug to feel the temperature, you'll be surprised to build a pretty quick understanding of how hot that milk should be after a few attempts and guesses. See, it's kind of a fun game I like to play to see how hot I think the milk is before I place my thermometer in there to double check. This way I build the skill of feeling the right temperatures. I will say it's usually always cooler in the jug than what your hand is telling you. So knowing that and to get the right temperature while steaming, when I feel it's too hot to touch under the jug, I count in my head one, two, three, and then I reach up to turn the steam wand off and that gets me consistently in that range of 58 to 65 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the milk will gradually rise the longer you steam it for, whereas you can kind of approach adding volume to the milk in a few different ways, at the start, through the middle, or constantly. But to clarify what we've learned so far about adding volume, there are two different actions occurring when we spin the milk. One is creating bubbles, and then the second is breaking those bubbles down smaller and smaller, and also incorporating them into the body of the milk. Now machines and steam wands will vary on how fast they can spin the milk. So how effective they are at steaming milk based off of the machine's pressure and power limitations. But for decent milk steaming, you want at least 1.2 bars of steam pressure, but ideally I would say around 1.24 bars of pressure. And that's a steam boiler temperature set within a range of 122 to 128 degrees Celsius to attain those pressures. And also the amount of steam holes to that steam tip is important and equally impacts the force of the steam coming out. You either have a one, two, three, or four hole steam tip. Three or four is ideal for a good spin, but the more holes you have, then the more pressure is being released at once. So you then need a good amount of power behind it in order to make that steam effective. Partly why so many machines use one and two hole steam tips. Using one hole isn't hard, but it takes a little bit longer to get the same results. As you can imagine, even having two hole steam tips will speed up the heating process as well as help the spinning of the milk to create that volume a little bit faster. 
And one last topic to cover is how to hold the jug whilst you're steaming. I'd be looking to use your dominant hand to hold the jug, which is also the hand you'll pour your latte out with. Place your thumb on top of the handle, then place your pointer and middle finger inside the handle, with one or two fingers sitting outside the handle to counterbalance the jug whilst you're steaming. Then use your non-dominant hand to reach up and turn the steam wand on. Place your non-dominant hand under the jug now to check the temperature of the milk, and when you get to that temperature, reach back up to turn the steam wand on. And in following this approach, you're not swapping hands throughout the process. And that wraps it up for this episode of Beginner's Guide to Latte Up. Now, I know we didn't get to any of the juicy stuff yet, but next video, we're gonna jump straight in to the positions of the jug and the steam wand for steaming milk. So stay tuned for that one. Now, if you have any questions on what I've covered today, throw them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.